Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how I made my very first and second Victorian lampshade. The second one is the one in the back here. It's my favorite. The first one was kind of a trial run. I purchased a really cheap wire lampshade off of Facebook Marketplace, so if I mess it up, I wouldn't be too upset. I did follow a bunch of tutorial, YouTube tutorials that I found online and some other articles that I found on blogs to figure out how to create these. Although when I was watching some of the tutorials, I found there were still questions that I had. This one in the back, the frame was purchased from the UK, so it was very expensive. That's why I wanted to do the trial run first. And then once I had mastered it, I would do this one. And I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. I think it's gorgeous. Just a heads up, these are quite costly to make. The materials are expensive and they take many, many hours. <laughs> Although you can definitely make it cheap. You can usually find old lampshades at thrift stores and then just take off the fabric and then reuse that wire lampshade. However, I did think that this actual shape of shade was really hard to find in the Canadian thrift stores that I went to. They were all kind of like this curved kind of shade and I wanted this one specifically. I hope this video helps someone who wants to make one of these and doesn't know where to start. I think it would have helped me if I watched it. Okay, so we're going to dive right in, but before I do that, I want you to watch the video I'm linking below by another creator, and she's the person I learned from to create the lampshade. And I think that plus this video will help answer most of your questions. I'm not going to go into too much detail about some things, and she does. I'm more so going to explain some of the things that I figured out or had struggles with. So what I'm doing first and foremost is wrapping my wire frame. So I'm using just a cotton tape. It's I think about a half inch um, in thickness and I wrapped it around the whole bottom of my wire frame plus the top ring. And then now I'm creating an outline for a pattern. There's different ways you can do this. This is the first way I tried and I prefer the second way which you'll see later in the video. Essentially, I just laid some fabric on a pillow and then used the frame on top and then traced outside of the frame to create one of the panels. I'm using this pattern to cut out on my outside fabric for the lampshade. You can see that I have the pattern piece crooked, kind of like a 45 degree angle because you want to cut on the bias. I will link um, some help for you if you don't know what on the bias is. Your fabric choice is important. I chose to use cotton because I was um, told that it is the easiest to work with, especially for a newbie. Also something that is a light to medium weight and with a tight weave. Once I had it cut out, I wanted to put them all together to make sure I liked the way the pattern pieces sat next to each other. And then I sewed all of the seams until it created a circle. So then you have this kind of like dress or a skirt that can fit right on top of your frame. Next we have the pinning, which in my opinion is one of the hardest parts and it takes quite a long time. I start by pinning four points at the top, kind of like a north, south, east, west, and then I do the matching spot on the bottom. Once I have that in place, I stretch and pull in different directions to make sure it lines up the best. You want those seams to line up on your struts, which as you can tell from mine, they didn't. I don't think my pattern was that precise um, but it's okay there is some wiggle room because you're gonna put a braid like trim over top so you don't have to be exactly perfect but it's better to be closer than I was you also want it to be very taut so you can see my fabric is quite stretched when you tap on it it should be like a drum um, you can see I have pinned now on the entire perimeter of the top and the bottom to make sure that nothing moves after I found what I was happy with. Next we move on to sewing. I'm basically sewing the fabric to the cotton tape. This is really hard. Um, it's hard to push through that tape. You want to make sure you're using a very heavy weight durable thread and a long durable needle. And I started off with a knot on the thread so it didn't go through and I didn't do a fancy stitch as you can see here. Later on I did a lampshade stitch uh, but for this one I just did a regular one. One thing I learned from this lampshade is that my fingers were killing me. So I did get a leather thimble and use that for my second lampshade. They're pretty cheap like five bucks or you can make one on your own. 
So now we've got everything stitched up on the top and the bottom. I have to trim that tape in the middle and we're going to have to clean up this excess fabric. You're just going to want to grab some small scissors and trim all of that extra off of the bottom. But you have to be really careful because you want to get close to the stitching, but not so close that you're going to compromise that stitching and cause it to loosen. I used the same pattern to cut and sew the lining for the lampshade as well. However, you can tell that it is too large. The inside pattern does need to be smaller than the outside, and I did take in the seams a little bit, but I think my patterning was not precise so it didn't look great and you'll see that later and how I fix it in the second lampshade okay so we have this finished lampshade finished meaning it's ready for the trim um, so we have to cover all this up because the thread here is not pretty and then same with the bottom area all of this needs to be covered up um, obviously I didn't do the best job on the inside, there's a lot of puckering here, which is not ideal. Um, and I also added the little strut covers you can see in here. For these, I grabbed the cotton tape, folded it in half, wrapped it around the struts, and then sewed it to the tape before adding the trim. I have done a lot of shopping for trims and fringe, and I've had to go to numerous places to find these. Um, I ordered this off of Amazon and it's too short for like the big lamp I want to make. So I thought this lamp would actually be perfect for this because this is a much smaller lamp. So the scale fits, but I did end up buying a six inch um, for the bigger lamp that I want to do after this one. So this was on Amazon, I think it was like $20 and there's five yards. So there's definitely more than enough, although I am going to do this twice. So I'm gonna take this around two times, double it up because it's not that thick. So you can see it's, it's not bad, but it will look much better if it's doubled up. So I have two kinds of trim and I bought these in person because I want to make sure that I liked them. So I have this, they're called braid gimp i think so this is the thicker one and it actually has kind of like a like it's more solid in the center the sides you can see uh some holes there but then in the center it's more solid and then i have this one which is more like a braid like there's a lot of openings in the middle so i'm gonna use a mix i have bought a ton of both it's not cheap um well, this one I got from a sewing supply store downtown and it was $2 a yard. This one I got from Fabricland, which was quite expensive. It was $4 a meter. I don't know why. Some do meters, some do yards. Welcome to Canada. I'm going to start with this one to cover up the like ugly threads around the bottom. Okay, so that's what it's looking like so far. I'm gonna keep doing that and I will return. Okay, so I finished the bottom. This is what it looks like. One thing I'm a little worried about is that this does stick out a little bit here because I kind of put this on the center. So I'm hoping that the fringe will lay flat. So now I'm going to add this to the top and I'm gonna do it kind of so it's so it's kind of more inside of the lamp to cover all of that because I'm also gonna be putting one around here on the top. So I'm just putting glue over the actual white threads. Not too much glue is it's gonna drip. And I do a little bit at a time because it's a little bit stressful to have to do 
a big chunk. Okay, so I finished the top lining. It's all kind of more towards the inside and then I will put another one here um, just to finish off this piece. But now we need to do the struts and the lady in the tutorial recommends putting this on a table lamp so you can see the struts. Okay, so this is the lampshade on my snake lamp. <laughs> not the lampshade, not the table base that I plan to use, but it's gonna work for this because I don't have one yet for this lampshade. So I plan on using the smaller gimp braid and it's just gonna go from here to here. Okay, so I did all of the struts. I did a big boo-boo. Wrong side and right side. So this is the right side. And then this would be the wrong side. I mean, I think, but um, also it's easier. This is flatter, so it will sit nicer. So for half of them, I have it the right way. And then for half of them, I have it the wrong way. So this whole area here is correct and then you get to here there are three of them that are incorrect so that'll just be the back <laughs> i am going to take this one now and just finish off the top So this is what it's looking like. This is with one layer of the fringe. Okay, so I'm gonna glue a second layer on now. Okay, so I can add this trim. This trim. I think it's gonna be this one. Even though this one's a bit smaller and this is so wide and because it's doubled, it's so thick. I think the other one's just much nicer and I like how it matches this one. Okay, here's the final lamp. I bought the base from Ikea. It's really affordable and matches really well. I painted the little top part that it came with and it has a little pull cord as well. Okay, now we're getting into my second lampshade. I did a different pattern than the first one. I'm gonna use two panels for one pattern instead of one panel. So I wrapped the struts on the left and the right going up and down, and I'm now gonna put my pattern fabric on top. You can see I have marked the bias with the chalk just as a reminder for myself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pin the fabric along those left and right struts that I have put the cotton tape on. This will allow me to get a really nice 
fit so that I can get a more accurate pattern as you can see here. And now I'm going to have half the amount of panels that I did in my first lampshade. So you can see I drew the chalk outside of the wire strut and underneath the bottom wire struts and above the top one. So it gives you a little bit of seam allowance. My hope here is that because I have half the amount of panels, I have half the amount of seams on my lampshade. So hopefully things will line up with the struts a little bit better and maybe I'll have a more precise pattern. This is what it looks like once I had them sewn together and placed on the frame. It was a tighter fit, which was great. Not 100% perfect, but more in line than last time. So now I'm doing the pattern for the lining. I have put the panels in half again. Um, basically, I'll have two panels to sew together for the inside lining versus the four that I had for the outside lining and versus the eight that I had for the first lampshade. This is what it ended up looking like. It was still too big at the first try, so I did take in those two seams about a quarter inch each. I think it was a quarter inch, or it could have been a half inch, but I think it was a quarter inch. And this made it much tighter and it fit much better. So once I had it all pinned together, you can see that that balloon lining is way better. There's a couple places where it kind of puckers, but it looks significantly better than last time. So I used the lampshade stitch and I'll link that below. You can see it looks a little bit more uniform, not exactly the same as the other one. And I'm basically using the same process for the braid. I'm just making sure to put it very center and I'm actually using a smaller glue gun. I felt that my large glue gun had too much glue coming out and it was creating a bit of a mess in my first lampshade. So I thought having the smaller one would be a little bit more precise and I did like it better. So this is what it looks like after I've put the white braid for the inside lining. It looks so nice, way better than the other one. And now I'm gonna move on to the outside lining. So because the inside lining I did for the bottom, I put more into the inside. It doesn't stick out as much like last time. So my fringe is gonna sit a little bit flatter, which I like. Cause last time my trim kind of went past the bottom ridge and then it made the fringe kind of come out a little bit from the lamp, if that makes sense. So I made sure to make that surface area very flat this time. You'll also notice I'm using a different fringe. I intended to use the black fringe I got from Amazon, but one, I didn't think I'd want black anymore, and two, this fringe is so much nicer. The Amazon fringe was um, a bit like crimped, and I even tried to steam it a little bit to make it flatter, but it didn't work. This fringe just falls so nicely and perfectly. I will make sure to link it. I'm also using a different color for the struts going down um, and then the fringe because they didn't have the same color for the fringe as that other trim, but it actually ended up turning out really nice and I like the two tones. I also did a double layer of fringe on this lampshade too. Um, it looked nice with one layer, but I felt that I could just see through the fringe a little bit too much, so I am doing another layer. It does bulk up the flat area at the bottom a little bit, um, but it's not too bad. And then I placed this braid on top so it kind of goes a little bit over onto the fabric so that you don't see a huge like shelf for the three layers of the different trims. I really took my time with this. I only did a few inch section at a time and really pressed in the fringe and the trim to make sure there's really good adhesion and I didn't want the glue to get messy so just go really slow and take your time throughout this whole process of trimming. I do the bottom and then the top last so you can make sure to cover those up and down strut pieces. This is the final lampshade. It turned out so much better than I was expecting. I am super proud of it.
Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and if you want to see a different video um, on this topic. I had a lot of fun making them, so I think I'll be making more of them in the future. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.